As you know, it started on September 11, 2001, when the Twin Towers were destroyed by George W. Bush. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It was Dick Cheney. No, I'm, no, no, I'm, no. It was Al-Qaeda, it was Al-Qaeda. And the plotters of the attack included Osama bin Laden, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, and Ayman al-Zawahiri. And America swore revenge. And over the next 20 years, America killed bin Laden, captured Sheikh Mohammed, invaded Afghanistan, invaded Iraq, bombed Pakistan, Syria, Yemen, Somalia, and Libya, deployed troops to Mali, Kenya, and Nigeria, and completely obliterated the big shampoo bottle industry. <laughs> Only tiny bottles for you. But in that whole time, the US never managed to find Ayman al-Zawahiri, until yesterday. The US has now killed the world's top terror target. More than 20 years after 9-11, the hunt for bin Laden's number two is now over. He has been in hiding for more than 20 years, one of the world's most wanted terrorists. But tonight, the United States finally caught up with Ayman al-Zawahiri. Justice has been delivered. And this terrorist leader is no more. Senior officials say the U.S. government used an unmanned drone and Hellfire missiles to target the third floor balcony of a residential apartment building in downtown Kabul. Experts say Hellfire missiles do not explode. Instead, the missiles are equipped with razor-like blades extending from the fuselage, which slice through a target. So it will go through and essentially vaporize a human body, but somebody standing within feet of this person would not be injured at all. The senior administration officials saying authorities spent months identifying al Zawari's patterns to avoid civilian casualties. The strike was so precise from a drone, it killed him on a balcony without harming any family members in the building. God damn. America clipped the world's most wanted terrorist off of his safe house balcony? I mean, also, at this point, maybe we should stop calling them safe houses. <laughs> no, every terrorist gets killed in a safe house. They should, they should call it a house that you think you're safe in, <laughs> but you never know. And what's crazy is that America didn't just kill him, they killed him with a razor blade missile, which I didn't even know was a thing. Did you? I don't know. Yeah, the weapons America has sound like things that kids just make up on the playground. <laughs> I'm shooting you with a laser guided missile with razor blades and a shark's body. <laughs> Meanwhile, the CIA, CIA is up in a tree like with a shark's body. Did you get that, boys? <laughs> we gotta go make one of those. <laughs> razor blade missile, that's especially genius. Because like, if it hits, you kill the target. But even if it misses him by a little, he gets like a really shitty <laughs> haircut. <laughs> and that's just as good. No one's gonna be loyal to a guy with a bowl cut. I will say though, I will say, you know, when you see stories like this, when you see stories about what America is capable of, this is where you realize there's really no excuse for the amount of domestic terrorism in America, right? Because Zawahiri, <laughs> Zawahiri lived all the way in Afghanistan, right? In some random safe house in the middle of nowhere. And America knew what time of day he liked to go out onto his balcony. But when a white supremacist posts on Facebook that he's gonna murder everyone and then buys an AR-15, everyone's like, oh, there was no way to stop this, yeah. Oh, if only he liked balconies, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I know some people are saying, oh, who cares? America killed Al-Qaeda's leader, but Al-Qaeda isn't even in the game anymore. This is like taking out Tom from MySpace. That's not the point. <laughs> the point is, America never forgets. Unless it's slavery, but everything else, America never forgets.